This video is supported by Brilliant.org. Good morning, sir. Time for breakfast? Oh, good morning, Clone Joe. Thank you, Clone Joe. Oh, that looks delicious. Thank you. Mmm. Always a pleasure, sir. Mm -hmm. Nice touch. I'm telling you, getting myself cloned? Best idea I've ever had. Yes, you say that every morning. And every morning it's true. Which is why I have some news I feel obliged to share with you, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what's that? I took the liberty of having myself cloned. What? What? No. What? What? Why? Just to help out around the house, take a little bit of the burden off of myself. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's a very good idea. But you say it's the best idea you've ever had. For me, it's a good idea for me. You say this every morning. So what? There's three of me out there now. Well, there's there's one of you. And one of me. Right, but you're my me, so that's three me's. Actually, that's one you and two me's. Yeah, but you're my me, so your me is also my me, so that's, that's three me's. I'm pretty sure my me is my me, and I'm your me. Does this guy have my DNA? He has your DNA. I've got to meet this guy. You must be the other me. Mm. Hey, it's the OG. Or is it OG Joe? Or Joe G? Oh, Joe. My God. He's not so bad. Hey, did you like the bacon? I made it. I didn't make the bacon. The company made the bacon and then I, I took it out of the package. And I, well, actually, I didn't take it out of the package the first time. I just put it on the grill and then all the plastic melted. That didn't work so well, so I got another package. And I took it out of the plastic the next time and I cooked it and it was, it was a lot better that time. It was less plasticky. Did you like it? I think the clones get less intelligent with every copy. Are you saying I'm less intelligent than you? Oh! Maybe a little. Well, it doesn't matter because I gave him specific instructions to not clone himself, isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. Clone myself. N no, don't clone yourself. Right. Joe? How about that? <laughs> She says, how about that? <laughs> he just found that video. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because making the bacon was so hard. You have no idea how hard it is to make bacon. I needed help. I make bacon every morning. Yeah, we should talk about that. It's probably not good for you to be eating bacon every morning. Oh, no, it's the keto diet. It's perfectly fine. Why does it make it okay just because it's on the keto diet? No, it's the carbs that get you. How's that working out for you? <laughs> well, at least this one's too stupid to clone himself. Nope, made two of them. Bork, bork! 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 Oh, come on! Bork, bork! 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 I might have skipped a step. Well, I hope you're happy. What? I just wanted what you had. I'm the original. I get to do this. You don't get to do this. Who says you get to say? Well, I think he's the original. He does get to say. You stay out of it. I'm on your side. Well, now, hold on a second. This this job is not for the faint of heart. This, you, you have to clean your toilet. You, you know, know how to go dirty and do the stuff right now. You're going to go just like cheat and make me look like a little cheat. You can go in here and you can do this. my job. You can do anything. I'm going to go. Stop. Everyone, stop. I'm the original. I get to say what goes on around here. Wrong.
I am the original Joe. I made you 10 years ago because I didn't want to go to my desk job anymore. What? But now that you're a YouTuber, I want my life back. Well, how about that? Uh, human cloning is a staple of sci-fi movies going back to the earliest days of sci-fi, but so far actual human cloning in real life has been totally out of reach. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's never happened. So what is cloning and why is it so hard? Cloning is the creation of a genetically identical copy or clone of another living organism. And it's not that weird. Happens in nature all the time, actually. There are many different types of worms, hydras, and plants that reproduce in this way by creating clones of themselves in various ways. And because this type of reproduction doesn't involve the combining of different genes together, it's actually called asexual reproduction. And generally, as you go up the tree of life, the more complex the organism, the less likely it is for them to reproduce asexually. For example, there are no mammals that reproduce asexually. There is, however, another type of asexual reproduction that's different from cloning called parthenogenesis. Take the story of Thelma the snake. Thelma was a python living in the Louisville Zoo. She had been there for four years. It had no contact with any males whatsoever. And then all of a sudden she produced 61 eggs, six of which were fertilized and created six healthy babies. Literally a virgin birth. It took a little digging into the DNA of these offspring to figure out what happened, but they determined what took place was that Thelma was able to take two of her eggs and fuse them together to create the chromosomes that were needed to produce this offspring. So it's kind of like her eggs fertilized her other eggs. So the six baby snakes combined had the genetic information from two different eggs, making both of them sort of half clones of Thelma. This has also been seen in various types of snakes in the wild, as well as sharks, turkeys, and Komodo dragons. Life, uh, finds a way. But it's not exactly the best way. Parthenogenesis is sort of like the ultimate inbreeding and it ultimately reduces the genetic diversity in populations that engage in it. So it's generally seen in animals with lower population density where the cost of getting two of the same species together is higher than the cost of the loss of genetic diversity that one would see from parthenogenesis. It also seems a lot more common in older species, for example, boas and pythons as opposed to cobras, which evolved much later. So we know that life finds a way, but can we find a way? Technically, we find a way all the time. Twins are actually technically genetic clones of each other. Identical twins happen when a fertilized egg divides in two, creating two offspring with the exact same genes. Now, this doesn't fit the traditional definition of a clone because it wasn't created from a parent animal, but you could argue that each twin is a clone of the other twin. But technicalities aside, there is a procedure that we've been doing for a while to create clones in animals, and it's called somatic cell nuclear transfer. So the female's egg only has half of the genetic information needed to make a person. The rest in nature is supplied by the sperm. And once it has all the genetic information, it becomes a fertilized egg that continues dividing and makes a person. That's sexual reproduction. But all the other cells in your body have all the genetic information needed to make a person. So if you take a healthy egg and replace its nucleus with the nucleus of a skin cell, that's basically a fertilized egg. And that will go on to make a person with the exact same genes as the original. Hence, a clone. This was first proposed by Hans Spemann, who taught zoology at the University of Freiburg in Germany in 1938 in a book called Embryonic Development and Induction. But the technology just wasn't there to actually do an experiment like this, so it wouldn't be until 1952 in Philadelphia when Robert King and Thomas Briggs were able to successfully clone a frog. But it would be another 30 years before we could actually do this in mammals. While some tests in the 70s did show that this could be possible with rabbits, they found that the embryos would never survive past a point called the marula stage. This actually turned out to be a huge hang-up. Because this is the last stage before the embryo, which is just a clump of cells, begins to form a blastocyst and the structure of the animal starts to take shape. This is where embryonic stem cells differentiate to do all the different kinds of things that cells do. And it wasn't until 1981 when Carl Immensi was able to do this with mice, creating three healthy offspring. But even this came under a lot of suspicion and many to this day don't think that he actually did it on the up and up. In 1984, Steen Willitson in the UK was able to successfully create sheep embryos, but they did not survive to term, unfortunately. But it was 1996 when they finally, finally figured it out. 
A team led by Ian Wilmot at the Roslyn Institute in Edinburgh finally successfully cloned a sheep. What they figured out was that if you could manipulate a certain stage of embryo development called quiescence, that it actually kind of goes into hibernation for a little bit, and for some reason that I don't personally understand, that's what made it work. And the result was Dolly the sheep. Since then, we've cloned all types of animals, goats, pigs, deer, cattle, and yes, cats and dogs. In fact, there's a company out there called Viagen that will actually clone your pet. You can even clone a willy. Of course, the immediate question we started asking after that was, can you clone a human being? It became a pretty hot button topic for a while. The ethical dilemmas around human cloning are obvious and they're nothing new. Every time there's any kind of new technological development around reproduction, it's always faced with a lot of criticism. In fact, in vitro fertilization was really frowned upon once upon a time because I mean, come on, we're creating babies in test tubes? Have we gone too far? But ultimately, research continued on human somatic cell nuclear transfer because the implications for medical science are just too good to pass up. If you have an embryo clone of yourself, you've got a nice little bucket of stem cells that match you perfectly. And you can do a lot of really cool things with stem cells. Stem cells are awesome because you can make those cells become anything you want. Need some liver tissue, then just tell that stem cell to become liver tissue and it just will create liver cells and you can just let them grow. This is stem cell therapy. There are currently life-saving stem cell therapies for all kinds of conditions, diabetes, heart disease, neurodegenerative conditions, and cancer. But because you are, in essence, creating a new life when you fertilize an egg, there are some people who are opposed to this on moral grounds. This has led some researchers to work on stem cell therapies from cord cells and from bone marrow cells, with mixed results. But the opposition seems to have quieted down a bit in the last few years, though, as stem cell therapies continue to save lives. But actually bringing one of those embryos to term and creating a cloned human? That hasn't been done. That we know of. In 2003, a company in Las Vegas called CloneAid claimed to have actually cloned a human baby that they named Eve, but then they would not let anybody do DNA tests to confirm this, so most people don't believe that they actually did it. And there have been some other claims, but to the best of our knowledge, no one's been cloned. Nobody. Nobody's been cloned. Nobody's been cloned. Although that hasn't stopped people from imagining a future where you could 3D print organs using stem cells or just custom order an organ for anything that you want. Should you need some kind of organ transplant, you can just make your own. Or, you know, the idea of actually having clone bodies that you could just pull organs out of whenever you need. This is pretty much the whole premise of the movie The Island. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a learning platform with a twist. Instead of making you drink from a fire hose of information, they gently drip information down onto you and teach you how to absorb it. Sounds like Chinese water torture, but it's actually pretty great. Let's say you want to learn how machine learning works. Well, you can start by doing the computer fundamentals course and then move up from there into the computer algorithms course, then into neural nets, and next thing you know, you got this down. And you learn by solving problems, and this helps you to understand the subject better because you're figuring it out on your own, and then you can take that information and apply it to other things in your life. It's kind of like a superpower. You can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash answers with Joe to get free access to their weekly brain teasers and puzzles and stuff, and the first 200 people who want to sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses can get 20% off for life. Don't just be smart, be brilliant. Brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this channel and a huge shout out to my answer files on Patreon to help make all this possible. We got some new people that have joined the crew lately. Let me give their names a go here. We got Braden Flowers, Pavel Klimenkoff, Floris Essies, uh, Mark Roy, Adam Beautiful, Sasha Kostel, Abraham, Zachary Fluke, and Kevin Hinnon. Thanks you guys so much. If you'd like to join them and get access to early uh, videos that people don't get to see, behind the scenes type stuff, and just access to me, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Please like and share this video if you liked it, and if this is your first time here, I invite you to check out maybe this video. Google thinks you'll like that, and if you do, maybe hit subscribe and then click the bell, and you'll be first to see all these videos and they come out every Monday and Thursday. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Now go out there, have an eye-opening week. And I'll see you on Monday. Yes, I will see you on Monday. Not that other guy. Love you guys. Take care.